So we're going to use post-it notes and we're going to identify signals and trends uh, that are affecting, we can focus on mobile industries. Um, I think about the larger category here of technology evolution. Um, thinking about all of you have different interests, some of you are in the entertainment, uh, business or other categories. All the things which are changing within this multitude of landscapes that we're existing in and trying to identify market opportunities or understanding what's changing, all of it's relevant. Put it up. What we're trying to do is expand um, our understanding about what's moving just beyond the edge of reason, right? Just beyond the edge of reason. But if you stay on this side of it, we're not going to break new ground of thinking, right? So we're going to look at signals, and I'm going to do a framework on the board. Um, trends, again, are midterm, and drivers are longer term. And then I've added another one here. Uh, portability is another uh, driver. Um, I want you to focus on signals at the top. I'll draw a line, and then you can create trends on the bottom. When people do this, they iterate between the two. You might have a gut feel. You might have an idea about a movement or change that's happening in society. Don't bother trying to come up with a bunch of signals. We're going to just do this in 20 minutes. Put the trend on the board. Or if you have signals where you say, this event happened, this election happened, this, this DRM policy just happened, it's a signal. Put it up. You know, we, and then we'll, we'll, we'll move between the two, two spaces, between the signals and the trends. Um, and you can focus on uh, 1980 to 2030. Uh, remember that, um, that we don't know what's happening in the future, so you can use your wild mind. The nice thing about this work is it's evidence-based, but then you have to have a, a wild mind in order to do anything with it, right? So think about the Canadian or international context, and uh, if you're ready, you're not going to report back, we have to do it, um, where we're going to go. So you can come up. I'm going to prepare the board. By 2010... I just tripped up. So what we're going to do is, uh, is signals go on the top. That's the evidence of change. Things that you think uh, this means something. I don't really know what it means. It means something. It was significant in terms of the history and the evolution of, of our collective industries, right? And the trends are really those things which are changing that you're naming, like crowdsource funding was an example. And drivers, if you come up with them, um, you can just put them along the bottom. And so this is, this is the iceberg, right? And I'm anticipating that we'll have a lot of signals, a few trends. Um, where you can uh, designate whether or not a trend is um, technology. Well, let's do it with the framework. If you can, it's helpful so that we can see whether or not we have gaps. Um, economic, political, and values. Like so generational differences um, is a category of values, for example. So post notes and sharpies are there. Just go. We're not watching each other because we're all doing it at the same time. So I'm going to get in, um, and all the speakers should get in as well. This is important. So if you can designate on your post-it note which one you think it is, then that would be great. So if you're inclined to write something and it feels silly, just go with it. It was a big something. Something might have a technology or an economic, or you might have a combination of designations. That's fine. Like I just read up Y2K, it's, it's technology and economic in terms of all the investments that went into it. Practices. So we can just keep going, but I'll just talk a little bit from this side on about what we have so far. Um, Grunge and, grunge and coffee as a signal, is that the, that's like the popularity of, right? Which might be, um, you know, the kind of alternative movement, right? That we might, this one has a buckling of things like internet, interconnectivity with social networks and Twitter. Um, and also related to it, continual partial attention, right? Which I would separate those out into two trends. Um, we, things, you know, when there's a force, it's third law of, you know, physics, third law. Um, so there's usually a counterforce, right? So what we want to do is um, think about if there's the rise of Facebook, we also know that there is uh, people turning off, right? People turning off of Facebook as well, like mass movements. And, and also people, people oscillating. Right? And this is related to uh, privacy concerns, right? And usually, generally, when I do this, I don't mix the two, but I might layer. So you can, re you can talk about a trend from one angle or another. And if something has lots and lots of layers to it, it's social, it's technological, it's economic, it's, it's environmental, it's political, it's, then you're like, okay, this is a massive disruption. Like, if we're going to talk about anything, 
talk about that one first, right? Usually, in the, when we think about the backs, like usually when I do this, the history can be quite <laughs> uplifting. Right? It can be about um, you know, inclusion or um, some of the great things which have happened to us, advancements that have happened, inclusions of new technology. And then what tends to happen, um, it's not just me, but that when we, sometimes we start to think more pessimistically about, about the future. And just knowing that that tends to be something that we do, um, which might just say something about the thick present that we're in and about well, you know, the issues or the values that we have right now or the things that we're worried about. We're often more concerned about the future or we're not as concerned about the past because it's already happened, right? So, so we would just generally just check ourselves to balance ourselves out. Um, where What we would do now is we would look at uh, the signals and see whether or not they're connected to trends and then see whether or not all the drivers have, have been broken out into much smaller pieces. So what we would do is we would keep oscillating between each side of this uh, until, it's, until it's robust. We would probably want to do some fact checking as well on some of the pieces. But that's, that's enough to do it for now and we won't get um, totally crazy about it. But what I want to do is a call out. It's a five year timeline. So if we look at this space here, um, that's a seven year time horizon. And given the businesses that you're in, even though it's fast paced and it's agile, um, if you haven't taken into account something that's happening on a seven year horizon into your businesses now, uh, it means that you will be late at coming to the table on it. It means that your organization will probably recognize it when it's already in everyone's face and there are other entrants who are already there and it'll be fairly saturated. You can iterate and improve on what other people have done, but if you want to be someone who is part of that tide and that rise, in some ways like Facebook was with social, with social media, with social networking, um, then you would want to know what's coming up and how do we meet it there? How do we meet the future? This is what we think is going to be happening and how are we going to anticipate it? So even though some of this can get fairly silly, it's actually some of it's quite, um, quite important. Like print your own organs, right? And, you know, we could laugh, but then actually, no, you know, it's actually not funny, and it's, <laughs> it's actually something that we should take, pay attention to. And that's, yeah, right? I don't get to print my own organ, although that would be extremely useful right now in my brain. I would probably reprint rapidly <laughs> right now, um, right here in my pocket. But, um, but, but yeah, if we're moving there, what does it mean about what's currently happening right now? Right? And that we know that this is in labs and experimentation. It's going to change not just the health industry, but you know, our daily lives and our health and our life expectancies, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and then you have, so you can look at the far end and say, what have we missed in this period? Right? If we had, even if it's wacky, it's like, well, what, what's underlying this? Where did that idea come from? And then you can trace it back and say, what's happening now that's related to that? Similarly, in the past, if you see these movements and these gaps, you can also start filling in the period that you're most concerned about. So we just did this, this thing, iterating back up and down here. Um, and then at this point, what we would do is iterate from here back, back into the space to make sure that this is fairly comprehensive. And then as an organization, what you would do, um, I don't think we have time to, to do responses to it, but you might say, um, if here are some of the issues, like offshore uh, landmass. Um, this is the movement of uh, people and organizations moving to just outside of uh, national waters, being in international waters, so there's no jurisdiction, no taxes, et cetera, et cetera. And these communities are starting to pop up uh, now. Um, and you were talking about there being uh, you know, a flotilla of people who are doing startups who are also in international waters for some of the same purposes as well, right? Um, so this kind of almost snow crash kind of idea of that we're all in, in these international moving waters um, is, is something. So snow crash could have been a signal back, back here, right? Um, Neil Stevenson's book, which many of us have probably read. Uh, science fiction also um, is also a very important source as well when you're thinking about this. Uh, because already those writers have picked up on the signals and have extrapolated it into the future for us. More peace or more war? That was that. That's like, I'm not sure. We this is a this is considered perhaps um, a critical uncertainty in terms of our daily lives. We're not sure which way this thing is going to break out. Um, and as I said before, oftentimes if there's something moving in one direction, there's like there's a kickback. 
And so what we're also doing oftentimes is trying to think, what's the reverse? Is the reverse also happening at the same time? Um, and then those might be your most critical uncertainties. And you, what you would do as an organization is look at the board and say, which are the ones that are of the highest impact to the business I'm in, and which are the ones which are most uncertain? Like, don't know. Those are the ones that you focus on the most as an organization. But you would look at the space and say, can we meet this? Right? And that's where your market opportunities come in, is always looking ahead. You know, if it takes you two years or one year to build something, then you'd better at least be looking three years out. Probably more if you want to be, if you want to be integrating this deeply uh, in a learning organization that's constantly doing these scans. So it, it, with the don't knows, you would entertain. I'll show you that's scenario planning now. So what you would do is you would entertain both ends of that happening, and ask yourself, um, what would we do in one situation? Does it radically change what we would do in the other situation? Is our response radically different? Does it affect us? Yes, it affects us deeply. That's high impact. That's a critical uncertainty we have. You'd probably do more research, but you would actually develop a strategy um, for either traveling, something which is safe for both worlds, or traveling into one direction, betting on one thing happening, but eyes wide open. So you would know that there's an extreme risk. You're making a risky move. The other thing could move, and you would create, it's called signposting, ways to understand whether or not the opposite direction is actually happening. And you would prepare your organization to be agile, that something major that affects your business could, could be happening. And it's that constant scanning to see is the reverse happening is what is the most important thing to do.